Following his keynote speech at the Latino Advisory Council Family Institute Day on October 15, 2015, Richard, now an award-winning DCFS social worker, shared his story alongside the man he credits with saving him. Um, I ended up at DCFS because of a physical abuse and neglect by my mom. Um, she, you know, she had a substance abuse problem. Not until I got older, I realized that it's, it was also mental health. But that was the main reason. It was a lot of physical abuse. I've, uh, she would hit us with just about anything. She would grab our hands on, put me in the hospital twice, and um, eventually, a uh, uh, child protection worker was able to. Um, to then um, build some trust with me because I would always lie to him about what was really going on. But once I built that trust, I told him the truth, that, um, that I was being physically abused and neglected. So I was removed and I was placed in, 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 a, in a foster home. Um, and then from there, I then transitioned into uh, a group home after I started misbehaving and running out and running away. You used to run home? What's that? You used to run home to your parents? Yes, home? yes, I would run home, I would run home and I would stay there. And I remember a couple of times the DCFS worker knocking at the door and I'm hiding from them. And they're out there looking for me. Um, and I would hide, you know, but I, I went home and I stayed home. Why do kids do that? They, uh, they were abused and they still run back to their parents? Yeah, well, you know, a lot of times it's uh, the adult making those decisions for the kids. Um, you know, when we go out in the home, um, it's not always the kids saying, you know, I want to stay here. It's more us saying, uh, you can't stay in this environment. Um, they run home because they love their parents, because that's who they were raised with, they grew up with. And, um, you know, they don't, they may, I don't think they see child abuse as the way we see child abuse from um, the macro perspective. I think they just look at it more as just sometimes even discipline, <laughs> you know. But you had to go to the hospital on a number of occasions. Yes, I did. Um, and I would attribute that to not that my mom didn't love me. Um, it was more that she was struggling um, with being a single parent. So I, I've always had kind of a knowledge, you know, like uh, awareness, I would say. And that awareness would be that, you know, my, I always believing that my mom could change, you know, that she, she doesn't mean to hurt me or beat me or anything like that, you know, that it just got out of control at that moment. Is that I remember as a kid, um, I felt at that time that DCFS um, was in the business of removing children and not, and not putting them back together. And once they took them, they would linger in foster care. Um, so I kind of wanted to come back and change. I really felt that the piece that DCFS was missing was prevention. And so that's what, uh, what I wanted to do is come change DCFS. Turned out that they've always been the type of agency that's always trying to help people. And, and I didn't realize that a lot of the uh, the support that they were trying to give my mom it was really my mom that wasn't accepting it. So, yeah. And you had a very special guy that uh, that helped you during that period. Most definitely. I mean, you, you've talked to him about me before, and uh, I noticed in your speech today you. Yes. And uh, what did you think about him? Uh, well, it was powerful. I think it was powerful for him. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, you know, I'm just very happy and proud that Sean continues to to give me all the support in the world. Um, you know, if you ask Sean, he'll always say, it wasn't me, Rick, it was you. And that's a typical social worker talk, you know. But he, he, he was instrumental in, in helping me um, address some of the issues, including the biggest one was alcoholism. And once I started to realize that alcoholism was really the thing that was affecting a, a lot of me, um, strangely, a lot of the anger started going away because you know he would talk to me about it and he would uh, advise me to go to groups and while I didn't really want to go to groups he advised me to read on it and so I did that so I started reading a lot about alcoholism and uh, as, as time went on I, I realized that a lot of my angers were starting to, uh, to disappear you know so I'm, I'm just very happy that Sean and I are still friends to this day and yeah, when you've talked to me Make you make him sound like a hero to me. Well, you know, um, he almost feels to me like a hero. I mean, he just, you know, he's he he was able to help me, um, and 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 a lot of it is me trusting him and and being able to listen and open up to him because, you know, one of the things that Sean would always see is to have the ambition. You know, I wanted I wanted more. I wanted better, and so he was good at knowing uh, how to you know 
push those good buttons. <laughs> Within a matter of uh, a month and a half, I first went to, uh, they call it the Audi Home, the Juvenile Detention Center. I went there um, for one night um, because at, at that time, based on what I've been learning, um, bad learning, should I say, uh, domestic violence, alcoholism, all that stuff within my family, it was almost normal to feel that, you know, it's okay to be, you know, aggressive towards a woman. So I remember I smacked my girlfriend and ended up in, in, in the Audi home at that time. Uh, then I got out and then I ran away again, went back out on the streets. And then after I got back out on the streets, um, I got into a, uh, there was a big, big fight with uh, a local other rival gang. And I remember that the police showed up and they grabbed me and then they tried to charge me for something else that had nothing to do with this, you know, but they, they went ahead and charged me with some intimidation over something that I had nothing to do with. But, you know, that's the way they worked back then. So they grabbed me and because I already had a charge, and then I went back to the Audi home and spent three weeks there. And, uh, and so, you know, up, up, upon, upon a lot of different stuff, I really didn't want to be there. I know that. And, um, and I, but I, it, it, it didn't change me. Like I still went out on the streets. Now there were certain things I didn't do anymore, um, but, there were, but I was still out running on the streets. I was still trying to you know, sell drugs. I was still you know, trying to do a lot of, a lot of different stuff um, you know, to try to survive out there um, in, in the streets. And so um, eventually, you know, the, the beautiful thing about it was because we were so caught up in our community, we always thought that these are just our friends, you know, and these people that are gang members are always going to be the people that you have to be around. Uh, I wasn't too confident in, 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 in the belief that you can make friends, other friends. So when I uh, was blessed to be able to go to a Catholic high school, I think that really started helping me change when I started meeting new people and new friends that, you know, kind of love the same stuff I like to do you know, girls at that time, and we loved that. And so we were running, you know, that was, that was our thing. So it went from wanting to fight and do game banging stuff to now let's go, let's go to these clubs, these little teen clubs that used to be around. Now let's go there and meet some <laughs> girls. And it was determined into all about girls. And I was like, oh, this is better. I'd rather hang around with this group, you know, than about the girls, you know. So, you know, and, the, and, and that's, you know, that, that helped me really, you know, going to that Catholic school. You, you know, I'd say for myself, doing um, doing the work every day um, with kids and families for me is a is a privilege, um, and 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 Richard certainly was somebody that um, uh, for whatever reason we connected at that time uh, where where he was ready and looking for something different, um, and. Um, and, and I'm just so grateful that I was able to touch his life in some way and hope I've been successful in doing so with other kids uh, that I've worked with as well. Um, I, I, I am very serious about when I say to Richard that it wasn't me. Um, I, mean, I mean, Richard brings, and at the time I knew him as a teenager, um, a capacity for resilience. He had uh, dreams and a vision for himself um, and a desire. Uh, to create a different life. Um, for me, listening to Richard's talk today, the, um, the thing that was absolutely the most gratifying was, was, was Richard, when you talked about uh, having broken the cycle of violence. Uh, when I've seen Richard, and just in the intermittently being in, in contact over the years, um, and his, his marriage, his raising his kids, offering them a life um, so different than what you experienced growing up, and what's been possible for them. Um, I mean, I, I agree with you, Richard. That is the true success. And if, and if I played some small part in, in a junction in your life um, that helped you on that trajectory, um, I'm, I'm just immensely grateful for that opportunity. He says uh, that anytime he needed you and he called you, you were there. And today, you're here again for him. Well, you know, it, it, it was interesting. I, I had heard Richard talk about it before, as uh, or at least I'm not recalling it as a tune-up. Um, but it would seem like every every year, every couple of years, I'd get a phone call. He'd track me down, kind of wherever I was, <laughs> and um, and skills. and we'd have these, you know, just a, a phone conversation. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it might be an hour long, uh, getting caught up, and um, and. And, and I'm glad that, that, that you took things from that that were helpful. And I certainly enjoyed 
uh, and continue to enjoy watching how your life is developing, um, the man that you've grown into, the parent that you've been, um, and, 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 and now the supervisor and leader in, in the roles you're having uh, within DCFS. Um, thank you. It's a, again, it's an honor to be a part of.